All right, here it is, 2004 GMC Envoy. Replace spark plugs and coil pack. The down and dirty, quick and dirty, no BS. Here we go. Today, GMC Envoy also could be considered a Chevy Trailblazer. They're pretty much identical. We have the 4.2 I6 motor, which stands for inline six, straight six, for all you people that don't know that. I know everybody else is rolling your eyeballs. The vehicle is hesitating, it is bucking <clears throat> under load, and it's thrown a uh, check engine code. Also, it's thrown a reduced power code, and then it's the cruise control is not working. So, what we've done is when we scanned it, we have um, number four coil pack is not working. And what is that? Well, that's this guy over here. That's coil pack. Basically, goes right on top of your spark plug. This is what's going to fire that plug. So instead of having one coil for your car, like the older cars, you're going to have individual coil packs right on top of plugs. And we're also going to put six new plugs in. Always use AC Delco plugs. Factory plug. That's what the vehicle runs the best at. These happen to be model number 41103. It is a step up from the originals. This is the Iridium plug, which is a better plug. Can of anti-seize. You're always going to want to have that on the end of your plugs. So what we're going to do is basically take off the top of this cover here, undo a couple of hoses. There's a little plastic flap thing here we're going to take off just to get out of the way. Take out six coil packs, six plugs, and replace them. Should be about a half hour job. <clears throat> Check this out. We got some debris up here from uh, the trees. I'm going to shop back all that because Murphy will allow that to fall down one of your spark plug holes after you've taken out the spark plug into the cylinder because that's what Murphy does. So we're going to eliminate any garbage from around this motor before we start working. First thing, anytime you're working on any of these newer cars and probably older cars, but more importantly these newer cars is disconnect your negative battery cable. That way you're not going to have any sparks, shorts or anything, especially when we're doing an ignition system here. So go ahead and take that off. That's a 8 millimeter to take off that. And then you gotta come over here. Now we're gonna take off all four of these bolts down here. This is a 10 millimeter. So that's gonna come off that way. You're gonna come up here with a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna undo this part right here. Take that hose off and then this whole cover plate is gonna come right off. Get your cover plate off after you've taken off the side air hose here. You got two 10 millimeter screws, one here, one in the back. Once you've undone that, you're going to come over here and you're going to undo, where is it? I can't see it, there it is, that clamp right there, flathead screwdriver. Just going to come back here and undo that guy. This hose is going to come off of there, just tuck him out of the way, right there, and then there's a hose under here, and when you lift up, that kind of pops off on its own. Okay. All right, so once you've gotten all that done, you give it the wiggle wiggles, wiggle it off that part. You have an electrical wire back here that is clamped onto that, and this just lifts right off. So there's your air box. There's the clamp that held this electrical wire. There's your six coil packs. One, two, three, four, five, and check out number six. He's way back there. I've heard a lot of horror stories about how much fun that one is. So, according to the, the one, two, three, four, this is the one right here that has failed according to the uh, scanner. And the throttle body, we just cleaned that, so it's still very clean. Use the Amsoil Power Foam that we got over there at the guys at trustedoil.com front of the motor you've got this plastic cover right here you got four little tabs in the back side we're gonna pop them four tabs out and this comes off you've got two pieces right here that hold this down it's similar clips to the door clips that hold the door panels on we're gonna lift that up because the screw to this coil is under here and then we're just gonna take this out of the way 
All right, so I took a 10 millimeter and undid all the bolts that hold these coil packs in. They don't come out, so don't worry about taking them out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take each coil pack out and take them all out because pretty much the wires right here are right where they go. So the possibility of you messing up where each coil pack goes is real slim to none in this particular vehicle. On different vehicles, I would probably do them one by one. It all depends. But all you do to get them up, just break them free. And then straight up. You hear that little noise? There's that one. And I'm just going to set him right over there. And I'm going to do this one by one and just take out each one. And just lay him on the side, just like that. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of them out. Alright, to remove your coil pack, this little gray piece right here is a keeper. So you're going to push down in the center. And then I found easy just to put the screwdriver in here and kind of work it on both sides. And that keeper comes right out like that. And that's what that looks like. And I'm going to put that away for All right, to remove the coil pack, you got this nipple right here. And on the wire, come over here. Right in here is where it catches. So I just kind of lifted it up with a little screwdriver. And off comes connection. So there's a little piece that you're trying to lift up. There's the old bad coil. That came off real easy. And I'm going to set that over here in the junk bin. And we're going to go ahead and pull all the plugs out now. And then we'll put that new coil on. Alright, so we got all the coil packs out and laying over here on the side. That's the wire for the fourth plug, uh, coil. They are numbered from the front of the engine. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is the sequencing number. The firing order is totally different. If you want to take a look down there, those are the plugs down there. We're going to go ahead and pull them out. And of course, that one back there is going to be the funnest. Just like working on an inline Cummins diesel. Except they don't have plugs, but doing the injectors is just as fun. All right. All right, get the plugs out. This is the hardest one back here. I got lucky. 3 8 ratchet with a 3 8 socket extension and it was just enough to get in there. I'm going to see if I can get the socket off now. Ratchet, ratchet. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, come on. We're almost there. There we go. This one is a fun one back here. So, I think I got it. Wait for that thing to go sideways. Yep, that's it. Oh no, it <laughs> didn't get it loose enough. Oh man, Murphy. He loves my neighborhood. You gotta do this on all six of them. This one's being the hardest. So I want to get this one done first. Get it out of the way. I can just breeze through the rest. That yeah, should have got it. Wrench it sideways. Yep, plug sideways. Come on. There we go. Alright. Got the hardest one out. These guys have seen their time. 120,000 miles on them. They're done. Alright, we're getting the uh, old plugs out of the motor, putting new plugs in. Let's see if I can give you a shot of this. What I like doing is I take a piece of old fuel line hose and put the spark plug in the end of it, and I just sit here and I just twist this. I already got this one bottomed out, but I just keep going and going, and that's how I start my spark plugs. You'll never cross thread a spark plug doing it this way because if it starts going in the wrong way, the hose won't turn. So after you've gotten about 10 or 12 turns on the hose, you know your plug's going in real nice. Then you can put your socket on it and crank away and you won't strip the threads. These are all aluminum heads and man, you don't want to make a mess of those heads doing that. So this is a little problem solver that I've done with all the motors I've ever put plugs in. Works great. Got my nice new 
AC Delco plug going back in and it is very important that you take a little bit of NACs and just put a little bit on the outside of them threads I can tell you that the guy who did this before me didn't do it alright when it comes time to put the coil packs back in after you got the plugs done they just basically drop back in and tighten up with this 10 millimeter bolt I'm gonna put some NICs on these threads right here mostly because these coil packs were quite difficult to get undone and you don't want to mess this bolt up so I'm gonna put the NACs on it because I'm gonna keep this vehicle for another hundred thousand miles and I know I'm gonna be doing this again someday so uh, I'm gonna make my life easier for next time Let's see if I can do this with one hand how impossible is this gonna be yes folks he can he can do it one hand spin the bolt that's it just a little gob of NACs on there and you're done put it in tighten it up hand tight no torquing so here we go nice shiny brand new coil pack this was the reason that the car was misfiring got the part at advancedautoparts.com part number is E255P coil and then there's a couple more words that are probably in a different language this is what they told me was their top of the line coil it was like 70 bucks we'll go ahead and put this in and hopefully this will solve the misfires of the uh, Envoy. Okie dokie. Oh, look at that. That's the new coil. And all we're going to do is put this plug back on. Line it up. Sorry, I was trying to pay attention to what I was doing and not watching the camera. Okay, that just went click. And then there you got to put the keeper in. Let me get the keeper. That's the little plastic keeper. And that just goes right in there. I'm trying to do this and watch myself and tape it. And that just clicks in like so. And that just keeps it from coming off. See how nice and taut that is? All right. So now everything's done. It's all bolt back together. I'm going to go ahead and start the car and see how it runs before I put the uh, air box back on. It should run shouldn't have too much of a problem. Let me give it a shot here. Alright, let's see how she works. We got our lights are on, let the fuel pump prime. Always let your fuel pump prime before you start it. Give it a good four or five seconds. Alright, check engine light went out instantly. No lights. I think she's running nice now. Before it was like really shaking bad. It was just. Yep, there goes the idle. Idle's going down real nice. Oh, yeah, that's real smooth. I think that's a successful job right there. New plugs, a new coil pack. At 100 and. I mean, let's call it 124. She's right there. Dropping down. We're about 800 RPMs and it's going lower. So now, it's time for a beer. Good job. I like my dark beer. Not bad. Yep. Not bad. Not bad at all. And there's the Mustang we were working on earlier. Notice that there's no snow in the driveway. Huh? Ah! <laughs> it's because we don't live in a snowy climate. Sorry, guys. It's beautiful down here. It's Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> 